Okay, so this is using the Spatial Viz plugin, but not as a reader, but as a feature reader. Okay, so FME have a really nice little transformer called Feature Reader, which allows you to dynamically read from a data source that you specify on the fly, and it receives then input from other readers. So in this case, all I have is a creator, which is building a, uh, a bounding box, which has a specific uh, max and min tolerance associated with it. This could be a shape file that has a series of areas or some kind of Oracle spatial database that has a, a polygons or some kind of other um, geometric or geographic representations that is then going to be fed in as input into my feature reader. When I look at the feature reader, I can see that I'm looking at this database locally. I'm pulling out poles and primary conductors in this case. Scroll back over. I now see that I have a where clause defined. If I click on the where clause, what I've said is for the poles and the primary conductors, I want to pull out poles where the height is equal to 40 and the primary conductor where the status is equal to existing. We can put in you know, multiple compound uh, predicates here to support retrieval of data. And then finally, I want to say select only the features that intersect with the initiator's feature, feature bounding box. So I'm saying only pull out the objects that lie within the bounds of this created object or the thing that's, that's there. So basically it just gives me the ability to control a lot of information about how I actually run the, the, the extract above and beyond if I was actually reading it as a, as a straightforward reader type class object. So go ahead and run that now. This will actually write out to the inspector as well so I can see the results coming out. Okay, so a small subset of data is pulled out there. If I zoom in, and hopefully you can still see some of these gray objects here, but um, so what I have is uh, poles where the pole height is equal to 40. I think there's, a, there's significantly more poles in this database, but this is just limiting all of those. And then conductors where I think the status was existing was the, was the predicate that I had in there. So that's basically uh, you know, using a feature reader, which is a, a really powerful um, transformer that really leverages and, and extends your, your writer capability. OK, so now I'm going to go to a poll. Uh, Mark, can we put the poll back on now at this point? Yeah, we can. So uh, we're going to go and ask, uh, just to make sure everybody's with us still, uh, which uh, version of uh, Small World um, uh, people are using. So I'm going to launch that poll there. Just to find out where people are in, in their Small World usage. So do I have to make you the presenter there, Mark? No, I think that's done. The, uh, the poll's up there. It's OK. OK. And um, uh, nobody's, uh, nobody in the group has updated. To, I'm going to close that poll now. Uh, nobody in that uh, group has uh, upgraded to Small World 4.3, which is interesting. Uh, uh, Andy and I were just recently at the Small World User Conference. There were quite a few people who had upgraded to 4.3, but um, uh, in our group here, the majority are still uh, sitting at um, 4. Uh, dot something or 4.2. Yeah, the, so just so just to kind of add to that, then the Spatial Biz plugin supports all versions of Small World through 3.1 SP2. Um, we've tried very hard to maintain support all the way through. Uh, I'm not sure if there are any 3.1 SP2 customers out there still, but uh, yeah, and and we just got to set, have a second poll here, about looking at which are uh, in the group. We've got about 40 people in the uh, webinar today. Um, who, uh, which ver which uh, of the um, varieties of small world read and writer people are using, whether it's the spatial biz one, the uh, sort of default one from the GE small world, um, or uh, some of the older ones. And somebody did say here um, through the questions that they are upgrading to, uh, in the process of upgrading to small world 3 4.3. .3. Okay, and so I'll just share, the, I'm just going to close that poll and share it with everybody. Um, and uh, so the majority of people are using one of the older GE Small World uh, um, translators. A few people have upgraded to 4.22, and we've got about 20% people using the Spatial Biz uh, 
uh, plugin. So that's great. Okay, I'm going to hide that and uh, back to you, Andy. Okay, thank you very much. So everyone can see my screen again now. Yep. Okay, so uh, having done a couple of reader uh, functions, I actually just realized I, I missed something as well that we can go back to as well. Basically, the um, the ability within the Spatial Biz plugin to augment small world features with derived uh, physical fields and geometry. So when I click over here, you can see the physical attributes associated with the object. This one hasn't been set up with anything, but basically we can add additional attributes in here that are either physical, relational, um, spatial, uh, information, so we could add in information like the, the style that the pole is drawn or the conductor is drawn, the color of the conductor. We could ask that we could ask to add to the exported attributes things like the structures or the equipment which is attached at either end of the conductor. Even if it wasn't represented as an attribute within the small world model, we can augment that model on the fly within the configuration of the spatial based plugin. So that's something that's very relevant and, and worth bearing in mind, we do it on a lot of the projects we work on to actually augment the model. 